Depending on how closely you listen to how I pronounce my vowels, you may have realized that I'm originally from Wisconsin. And while I may not have lived there since the early aughts, believe you me, I'm a Scani. I'm a Packer shareholder, my parents live 20 minutes from a cheese factory, and there are more pictures of me on Bucky Badger's lap than Santa's. I'm also the product of what was an incredible public school system. What up, Madison West? Built by what was a historically progressive state. Huh? Oh yeah, bet you wouldn't have guessed that the home of the champagne of beers used to be a pretty progressive place. Starting with Robert La Follette, who was governor, senator, district attorney, congressman, and ran for president on a third party ticket in 1924. Legend has it that he lost because his campaign photo was generally deemed as super creepy. But his resemblance to a failed European hypnotist didn't hold him back from creating a strong progressive foundation in Wisconsin, with reforms like direct primaries and banning corporate donations to political candidates. Just like his hair volume, the progressive tradition La Follette established continued to grow throughout the 20th century, in which Wisconsin established the nation's first workers' compensation program, the first unemployment insurance program, a progressive state income tax, and more stringent child labor laws. It was the first state to recognize collective bargaining rights for municipal employees. And much of the New Deal, including Social Security, was drafted by Wisconsinites loyal to what is called the Wisconsin Idea, a philosophy meant to ensure well-constructed legislation aimed at benefiting the greatest number of people. Sounds pretty good, right? More than any other state, Wisconsin embodied the idea that states might become laboratories of democracy. Fast forward to today, and instead of a laboratory of democracy, Wisconsin has become a laboratory of right-wing, anti-organized labor politics. Wisconsin literally became a testing ground for the Koch brothers in how to remake American politics. During the Tea Party wave in 2010, the Kochs and other outside conservative donors spent millions of dollars to elect a massive wave of Wisconsin Republicans, including Scott Walker. And those Republicans remade Wisconsin politics. Quickly. Scott Walker and co. ruined Wisconsin's labor rights, environmental protections, voting rights, government transparency, the Packers' eight-year playoff streak, and my enjoyment of last season's Bachelorette because of Jason T's strong resemblance to a certain Wisconsin governor. And what's been the after effect? By 2018, Wisconsin experienced one of the largest declines of the middle class of any state in the country. Yep, it's about to get rough. Buckle your seatbelts. Its poverty rate has climbed to a 30 year high. Its roads were the second worst in the country. The University of Wisconsin Madison had fallen for the first time out of the rankings of the country's top five research schools. And it's estimated that 11% of the state's population was deterred from voting in the 2016 presidential election because of Wisconsin's new voter ID laws one of the strictest in the nation. The strictest voter ID law is in the Winnie the Pooh's 100 Acre Woods, where in order to vote, you must be an adorable animal under 4-2. Basically, no, Christopher Robin, you're not welcome here. The good news is that Wisconsin did manage to vote Scott Walker out of office in 2018 as part of the blue wave. Oh, bye bye But the damage has been done, and the fight over what the political leanings of Wisconsin will continue to be in flux. So by now you're probably thinking, I don't live in Wisconsin. Why should I care? Well, if you're someone who wants clean air and water, a transparent government, good public schools, and a semblance of some labor rights, you should take what happened in Wisconsin as an example of how fast the rug can be pulled from underneath you. <coughs> it had all of those things a decade ago. So for my Scotties, there's ground to regain. And for anyone who thinks they don't have to pay attention to politics because they live in a safely progressive area, just remember what Scott Walker boasted in his memoir. If he could change Wisconsin, he and his allies could do it anywhere. This has been Below the Fold. Go ahead and leave me a comment with your thoughts. I always welcome those who disagree. If you're interested in some other topics, check out some of my other videos. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, follow me at Kristen Bry, and check out www.belowthefold.co.